Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we are in Imperium Galactic Survival, taking a look at our small craft design for the Pelican. Mark 1s through Mark 4. We have one of each here. We'll start with our Mark 1 variant, which is of course the first one we put together. Uh, originally the overall concept design for it is kind of a transport slash gunship. We started with our typical T-shape design. Uh, the original idea I had for it didn't match what the end result was, and actually through a series of errors when building it, having to go back and change parts, we ended up with a completely unexpected design, as you can see with the cockpit here. Uh, it's got the, uh, I guess he's a, lar a large gullet type area here. It's heavily armored. The cockpit, the um, pilot seat is up here. We'll take a look on the inside in a minute. Uh, basically what we have is a hard armored transport craft that's fairly nimble. It can carry four, you can really put it up, probably up to eight people in there if you wanted to reorganize it. But it can carry four passengers plus the pilot. It comes equipped with the six Gatling guns and there's mounts, which you can clear these sections of the winglets off and added an additional two weapons on there. Uh, the problem we had with the original design was actually coming up with a tail design. Once we got to the point where we had the body and everything set up, the tail took uh, an extra day for us to figure out how we wanted to do it, and came up with kind of this uh, fat tail section here. Take a look at the inside here. We've got sensors to lower our ramps, using the narrow doors. Uh, basically what you'll do is you'll run up here, you'll access the cockpit there, and you can activate it. Takes off, rolls. It's fairly decent and all that for the purpose of the transport. Go ahead and put her back down. And it can actually take quite a beating. Of course, it's armor-plated uh, glass up there. It, we did have to use uh, two different rows. I'll actually step back out to show you that. For the glass, because of the cockpit taking up the extra three sl slots right there, meaning that it's three rows high. So it is tinted on the rooftop of the cockpit from the inside, but it's still completely sealed. Now inside our original design we have our four passenger seats here. We've got several of RCS here as well. There's more further back. And we have it set up so you can... The uh, blueprint doesn't have a warp core on it to keep the construction level for blueprint low. But basically there's room for a warp drive and then of course you put your fuel tank here and there's your other RCS as well. And we have our constructor, oxygen, our armory storage, ammunition. We do prefer to split our ammunition in half and put it on either side just in case you're taking damage on one side. You don't end up losing your ammunition store that way. Multiple fuel tanks and oxygen tanks spread throughout and of course refrigeration. This one is pretty much stocked and ready to go. You just need to add your warp devices to it and then it'll be good for short range planet to planet travel and of course it's a good combat vessel. Uh, it can take quite a beating. The headlight in the front, of course, is fairly weak, and you'll see in later designs that we eventually ended up replacing that. Uh, these mounts here, of course, you can just pull those out and replace with any kind of weapons. Usually that's where I put my larger rail guns and whatnot. Ended up moving a chain gun further back onto the winglet. Our uh, main housing for our directional thrusters is now near the winglet, of course. Take a look at our statistics here. Now, um, interestingly enough, when we were putting it together, we actually got the direction wrong. So what is listed as backwards is actually forward thrust. What's listed as forward is backwards thrust. It flies perfectly fine, but it just shows wrong on the chart. All right, so you get our idea here of our ability to roll, pitch, yaw, all that. You can see our unlock level is 10. That's the same throughout all variants, I believe. The overall size is going to be the same for all of them. Got our thrusters and everything else you need to know there. Now, on to... Is this the Mark II? Yeah, let's take a sec. Yeah, alright, the Mark II. So, of course, we started painting it up. 
The main changes for the Mark II, other than the paint job, was marking the uh, weapon mount areas. And we trimmed off the winglet a little bit. There wasn't really any need for all that extra there. Removed, or not removed, but uh, rearranged some of the interior. That's pretty much the main changes here. It doesn't come with all the extra bits and all that. It's a bit slower with the turn, because we are using a limited number of RCS on it. But basically, it's set up so you can put a warp drive here, you can seal that off, and then you can put all your other parts and seats and all that as you need there. Yeah, it's very much a streamlined design, basically, just to reduce the amount of resources required to build it. As you can see, it's uh, had some significant decrease in yaw and pitch, really. So you'll need to add some more RCS for that, which we addressed in our next variant for it. Let's see, on this one, we did not change the rear. Right, so the Mark III is actually up here. This is where we went ahead and started redesigning the uh, forward thrusters. We trimmed the extra row off of the tail, put a thruster up there, and then, of course, we upgraded our thrusters on the rear. Redid the winglets again. It does have the plasma cannons, which, in later testing, I ended up moving those from the front to the back and back and front and tried several designs. I found that worked better on the winglets because of the thickness of the craft. If you have them on these shoulder mounts, basically, you won't always be able to fire both at the same target when you're up close. We did replace the spotlight here, put a thruster there, reverse thruster. As I should have mentioned to all of our designs, we have our primary reverse thrusters sheltered in the alcove here for the entrance. So you won't end up losing your reverse thrust. Unless you lose this whole section, at which point you're taking enough damage that you're pretty much screwed already. Alright, so inside it stays pretty much the same. We re-added all of these parts. And we just went ahead and left the warp core and all that on there, which increased the build level for it. Went up to 20 which is, of course, a significant jump. Uh, beyond that, everything here is a bit more compartmentalized. There's room to put more seating. You could probably put another four seats in here as is, or you can reorganize it again, take some of the extra storage out. As for its maneuverability, our pitch and yaw went back up to the Mark I level. But beyond that, we didn't really see much performance improvement. It was more so just optimization for the interior. And that's pretty much the uh, main differences with the Mark II and Mark III compared to the Mark I. Now, our final version is the Mark IV. We just went ahead and replaced the nose with armor plating. We don't have any starting out weapon weapons in the uh, shoulder mounts here. Well, we're using that icon, of course, to indicate where you can mount weapons, ideally. Uh, we went ahead and moved our spotlights back and actually put side spotlights, and you can cut those out and use a whole other row of three weapon mounts for each winglet. Or, of course, you can always replace the Gatling guns. Our thrusters, we rearranged a little bit. Most of them are still in similar spots. We stopped using the small thrusters, I think, entirely on this one and started going with the mediums. It saved a bit of space, a bit of resources, and gave us a bit better performance. Now, the big difference here is that we went ahead and took the thruster back off of the tail, and we put this large set of thrusters here. So it gives you a good, solid forward thrust. Now, another part I didn't mention in the previous designs was that the core was actually in the back, the tail section, right behind the thrusters. In this one, we went ahead and moved the core to the front. Because in the testing for it, basically, the only one that I had to get shot down, it was because they shot the core out of the tail section. So by putting it up in the front, you're still absorbing all of that damage on the front, which is where you want to be absorbing your damage, of course, because it is a gunship. That means you are facing the enemy and able to return fire. We went ahead and increased our generators. Actually, that was increased on the Mark III. We added an additional generator. It was two generators, and now it's three. Uh, we got our unlock level back down to ten. You can see our pitch and our yaw are significantly increased with the number of RCSs we have. There's room for the warp drive and the 
power generator for it and there is a ton of room on the sides to go ahead and stack up additional cargo and you can cut these cargo sections out and you could easily get a total of eight seats back here and as you only need this one aisle to walk through they're all going to be easily accessible of course we have our typical constructors O2 armory and all that and we moved our ammo boxes further up to this armored section here under the winglet it's pretty much the thickest armor on the craft uh, it keeps you from losing your ammunition mid-fight because again if you're taking enough damage to blow these sections out then you're pretty much already screwed all right let's take a look here at the stats one more time all right so it's got enough power let me turn this one back on yeah, it's got enough power here that it can last for two and a half hours just idling. And I believe that gets down to about an hour when it's full, when in full flight. We had some performance problems with the Mark 1 and Mark 2 exceeding the generator production, basically, during full maneuvers. So that's why we added additional generators. Uh, none of these thrusters have yet to be shot off on any of the versions in this particular section. Same with the uh, forward section here. Pretty much majority of the damage is always on either the front or on the tail. And it's only been the one incident that we've actually lost the tail section when we lost that core. And by moving everything to the front, that should make it pretty much, uh, not impervious, but resilient enough that it's not going to be a problem. Alright, I hope you guys like the design. Let me know what you think. We'll go ahead and get this uploaded, of course, and we'll probably be uploading the blueprints to the workshop shortly after. All right. Well, thank you for your time, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Of course, as always, have a good day.